Good morning. I trust that this week you have put on your thanksgiving and your praise on. And we have seen last week that thanksgiving, uh, the opposite of it is ingratitude. And we've seen that you actually open your life to curses. You open your life to demonic uh, forces to interfere when you're constantly uh, murmuring and complaining and being ungrateful but when you're grateful to God with a sincerity within your heart it adds value to your life and the things we looked at that rob you from your thanksgiving that suck that life and that thanksgiving right out of you is pride you know attacking recognition for yourself not giving it to God it is a moaning complaining murmuring fault finding criticizing all the time looking at the one percent that's not right and not seeing all the other 99 percent that god is doing for you and we have also seen familiarity where we become so familiar with what we have with, the, with those blessings of god that we take it for granted and today i'm reading for you from colossians 3 verse 10 it says put on your new nature and be renewed how do we do this now he tells us as you learn to know your creator and become like him since God chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful say with me always be thankful and whatever you do or say do it as a representative of the lord jesus giving thanks through him to god the father so he says you must put on your new nature this is who you are now the way to put on your new nature is to put off your old nature and a great example of this um, is a spiritual leader uh, of mine that gave a testimony where his a child came from school and the children at school told him oh you're so stupid and this child started to say this i'm so stupid i'm so stupid to a point where he was in tears his parents had to attack him because this was now seated very deep in the seedbed of his soul and they started to speak with him and and they uh, bound these words they pray together they renounce it in jesus name then they use holy communion together because this is the only way you can put on the new nature is through the blood of jesus christ and after they have done this he has never spoken those words again so we need to put off the old we need to put on the new through the blood of Jesus. We need to put on this authority. And who knows, maybe you've got to go sit down and take those things that are not from God, that are the old nature, that is the opposite of what we just read in Colossians 3. And take that and say, Lord, I put this off. I'm not this. I renounce it. And now I put on your new nature. And we see that we've got to understand that this is not just isolated events in your life where you display the nature of God. No, this is now your being. This is who you are. This is a constant within your life. But due to a lack of thankfulness, being ungrateful all the time in your life, um, not being grateful for what God has done for you through Jesus Christ. What happens now? Our selfish nature comes forth. Now we don't give recognition to anybody else. We want all the recognition for ourselves. And you know the Bible says that humility is not a low self-esteem. Humility is a low self-obsession. He says above all, clothe yourself with love. Love is not an emotion. Love is a choice. It is the decision that you make to engage yourself with somebody else, to involve yourself in their lives, to take responsibility, to be like Christ within their life. And therefore, you and I cannot do this out of ourselves. To do this, we need the new nature. We need the blood of Jesus. We need the Spirit of God, the Word of God. And this is what Jesus did. He did something so powerful just before His crucifixion. In John 13, verse 1, we read, before the Passover celebration, that Jesus knew that His hour had come to leave the world and to return to the Father. And He had loved His disciples during His ministry on earth. And now He loved them to the very end. So He got up from the table. He took off the robe. 
he wrapped a towel around his waist and he poured water into a basin. And then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that he had around him. And now we see that he decided to spend the last hours of his life with the people that he loved. We see when we look at our feet, it speaks of purpose. It speaks of a calling within our lives. And Jesus knew their purpose. He knew their calling. Even though he knew before he did this that um, Judas would betray him. He knew that Peter would abandon him. He knew that Thomas would not believe. But even though he knew this, he did not uh, focus on where they were. That in spite of this, he decided to make himself a slave, a servant to these people and serve them to the end. In verse 12, after washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their masters, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Your pastor is not more important than Jesus. Jesus is the one that gave the message. He is the important one. He says, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Not now that you know these things, God will bless you for knowing them. God will bless you for doing them. He knew his disciples were going to abandon him. He knew they were going to betray and deny him. He knew that at the end, at the most crucial, the most difficult time in his life, they would all run away. But inside of this, he, he put his heart, he set his mind to love them and to serve them right up until the end. And this is the nature of God. He says, uh, now he loved them to the very end. This means he loved them to perfection. And to the very end doesn't speak necessarily about a time frame. But more than it was finishing the job. It was serving them to the end. Giving his life all the way to those who betrayed him. To those who abandoned him. And the Amplified said he loved them to the last and highest degree. He loved them with the total fullness of divine love. Not human love. He was about to be betrayed, abandoned, denied. But he did not focus on their imperfections. He focused on who he was. And now 1 Corinthians 3, 13 verse 5 says that love does not seek its own. And therefore, any times we come in our family, in our lives, where we seek our own, where we want to lift ourselves up, uh, you know, uh, despite of maybe putting someone else down or leaving them behind, this is not love. Jesus showed his love by serving people because Jesus knew he had the authority of the Father in him. He had the fullness of God in him. He knew who he was. He knew his identity. Therefore, he knew his purpose. And therefore, he could serve. Therefore, regardless of what people did to him, it did not change his purpose. It did not change or affect his identity. He could still go on and be who he is. And Philippians 3 verse 7, he says, but he made himself of no reputation. You know, when our reputation is affected, we want to show them who, who do they think they are, you know. But we need to come to a place where we realize that Jesus was willing to make himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Whenever we try to push ourselves up the whole time. It is unbelief. Unbelief that God has the power to exalt us. Unbelief in what God has done for us through Jesus Christ. Because here's the thing, the way up is down. And when we humble ourselves in the mighty presence of God, being servants, not wanting to get all the time, but knowing what we've received in Christ, being thankful for that, being able to serve others with this love, with this forgiving, what happens? God will exalt you. God will lift you up. And when God lifts you up, no man and no demon can drag you down, can bring you down. 
Matthew 6 verse 1 says, What you have done, do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. Jesus did not what he did to be recognized, to receive a reward. He did it because this was who he was. This is who he is in God. Our desire to be recognized, our desire to be important, our desire for position, our desire for promotion ultimately will destroy love. Every effort from your side to push yourself up, to exalt yourself is, uh, is an accusation, is an argument on the devil's side to pull you down and to destroy. Therefore, we need to learn to love God, to love people. We need to trust God and we do that by thanksgiving for who God is and what he has done in our lives. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, By this we know love, because he laid down his life. And also, we ought to lay down our lives for our brethren. So serving others, forgetting about others, not living for our own advancements and progression, but living for others, loving God, serving God. And therefore, God wants to restore us. He wants to bring us back to that place of thanksgiving and uh, calling us back to the throne of God. That we will go all the way, that we will fulfill the great commandments. But you and I will not be able to do that without the blood of Jesus. Uh, the moment we see ourselves through our own eyes, we become distorted. But the moment we start seeing ourselves through the eyes of God, knowing that through His blood we are redeemed, we are cleansed, we are forgiven, we are set apart. He, he puts everything in us we need to be who we need to be. The moment that we start doing that and allow the Word of God to renew us, allow the Spirit of God to do a work in our lives, now we have life in fullness. Now we have everything we need to give. Otherwise, we will never enjoy life. We will never have what we need. And God wants you and me to love to the end. He wants us to love all the way, all the time. Loving God, loving people. This is the nature of God. Serving God, laying our lives down for others. And once again, I'm telling you, if you are not grateful for what God has done in your life, if you're not constantly giving Him thanks for everything He's doing within your life, you will not be able to do this. If you're moaning, complaining, this speaks about doubt. This speaks about your own selfish nature. And therefore today, I would like you to become aware of the presence of God in your house, wherever you find yourself. And when we come to a place and say, Lord, I want to put off these old things. I want to put on the new nature. We do this by confessing our sin, confessing our weakness. We do this by confessing the condition of our heart, the, our inability to do this by ourselves, agreeing with God on our sin we have in our lives, not blaming it on other people. And saying, Lord, I come and I confess today. I renounce selfishness, ingratitude, None recognition from my love. I cancel it. I renounce it in the name of Jesus. Coming at a place where you say, Lord, I am confessing. And this is what we're going to do this morning. We're going to confess our ingratitude, our non-love, our selfish actions, our retaliation towards people, our insecurities, our unbelief. And we're going to put on the new nature. Are you ready? Yes, you are. Come on, let's do this together. Our Father, thank you that we can be in the presence of God this morning. Thank you that we can come and ask you to forgive us of all our unrighteousness, all our selfishness, all our pride, our arrogance, our familiarity. Lord, we strip ourselves from these things. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we take off all insecurities, low self-esteem. We take off doubt. We take off fear and struggles and the curse and any insecurity in the mighty name of Jesus. And thank you that we can clothe ourselves this morning with Jesus, with the love of God, with the fullness of God, with the forgiveness of God. Thank you that we can clothe ourselves this morning with the blood of Jesus being redeemed and forgiven and set free, being victors. Yes, we clothe ourselves with the victory of God through Christ, conquering in our lives, Father, and we thank you today for the work you are doing in our lives. That this is not just a fraction of our life, but this is our being. Our being is consumed with the love of God, with the Spirit of God, with the Word of God, with the purpose of God. And Lord, today, now we come and as we are no longer ungrateful and complaining and murmuring, now with this new nature, we come and we say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for this new nature. Thank you for the fullness of God in our lives. Thank you that we can love others knowing 
that with God we can never lose. Thank you that we can give of ourselves knowing that even the more we give, we never run, run empty because you keep on filling us. Uh, so the more we give, the more you fill us. Father, we thank you that you love us, that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit to guide us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus to continually cleanse us, to continually empower us. We thank you that we can walk in victory, that we can walk in the love of God, that we can empower other people. Lord, regardless circumstances, regardless whether they abandon us, whether they hate us, whether they deny us, whether they uh, betray us, Lord, we can still give because we are filled with the presence and the love of God. We're filled with the complete work of God that you did for us through Christ Jesus on the cross. And we thank you that we are clothed with you. We're not clothed with shame. We're not clothed with bitterness. We're not clothed with anger and hatred and ingratitude. No, those are the work of the flesh. We are clothed with Jesus Christ. Christ. And thank you that as we are walking close with Jesus Christ, we experience the unmerited, undeserved favor of God within our lives. The blessings, the grace, the favor, the goodness of God we experience it, knowing that we will not die, but we will live to tell of the goodness of God, knowing that this perfect plan you have for our lives, that it will come in fulfillment in our lives, because we are a hopeful people, a faithful people, a people who are full of trust and have faith in the work of God within our lives. And we thank you for that this morning, in Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go this week and walk in this new nature and see the unmerited favor of God within your life. Amen.